Okay, so for 46, sketch a rough graph of the polynomial that has these characteristics. So if the degree is even and has a leading coefficient that's positive, there's an example. Both n behaviors are going to infinity. Now if it's odd and negative, that means our n behavior over here is to infinity and over here is to negative infinity. So there's an odd graph with a negative leading coefficient. Even degree and negative, both n behaviors will go to negative infinity. An odd positive leading coefficient, our n behaviors go in this manner. There we go, there's an odd positive. Do the functions below have the same n behavior as x, okay, so let's think about x to the fourth as this kind of n behavior. So that means as x goes to infinity, y goes, I'm sorry, as x goes to negative infinity to the left, y goes to infinity. So yes, this one will have the same, no, and no. You can think of a graph, this is odd and positive, that's going to go in this direction. And C is exponential. So neither of those have an n behavior that goes to positive infinity. So now for x to the third, that has that type of n behavior. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. So if I look at a, that is an odd degree positive leading coefficient. So that will have the same n behavior. B is a even degree negative leading coefficient, so that will not have the same end behavior. And a log graph, that will have the same end behavior as x goes to infinity. Okay, so for 49, even, odd, or neither, even is y-axis symmetry and odd is origin. So if I look at A, A has odd symmetry with respect to the origin, B has neither, and C is even. You can see the y-axis here, it's symmetrical on both sides. So again, an even function, meaning it has y-axis symmetry, so the other point, if we're over here at 3, 8, this point is going to be negative 3, 8. Oh, 51, we've already answered that a few times. The graph of an even function has y-axis symmetry. Um, I'll go jump to 53 first. An odd function has origin symmetry. So to answer 52, 5, 7 is here. So an odd um, symmetry, the other coordinate is going to be negative 5, negative 7. Okay, the degree is going to be, for A, it's going to be odd because the end behaviors are in opposite directions. And I can see based on the polynomial, we have x squared and another x, so that is 3. As x goes to infinity, our graph is going to negative infinity. Okay, so the zeros are x equals negative 3 and x equals 0. Um, the multiplicity, so for x equals negative 3, that has a multiplicity of 2, and x equals 0 has a multiplicity of 1. You can see there's two zeros at negative 3 and just the 1 at 0. All right, give the coordinates where a relative maximum occurs. So looking at our graph, here's the maximum. That is at negative 1, 4. Our minimum, a relative minimum, is here at negative 3, 0. And when is the function increasing? Okay, so for um, increasing and decreasing, you always have to read left to right. So this is decreasing, increasing, decreasing.
and it wants increasing, so that is for every x between negative 3 to negative 1. As an interval, you can also see, I'm sorry, you can also do the bracket interval notation, and that also means from negative 3 to negative 1. Okay, for 55, we're going to do the same kind of process. If I think of the degree, so let's see, we have 2, 4, so the degree is 4. As x goes to infinity, our y values are going to infinity. All right, our zeros, x equals negative 1 and x equals 3, and they both have a multiplicity of 2. maximum and then minimum. Okay, so for D, the maximum, the relative maximum is here, and that is at 116, and then the relative minimum, well these are the same, so we've got negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. And then part F, when is the function decreasing? All right, so if I trace my graph left to right, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. So that is from negative infinity to negative one and from 3 to infinity. You can also write it as x is less than negative 1 and x is greater than 3. Okay, write the equation. So if my zeros are at x equals negative 2 and x equals 0, but I notice at negative 2 here, that has a multiplicity of 2, my equation is going to be negative 2 as a leading coefficient, x plus 2 squared, and then times x. So I'll rewrite that as negative 2x, x plus 2 squared. All right, similarly for 57, my zeros are negative 1, 0, and 2, but I notice. 2 is a repeated as a multiplicity of 2. Then we got 1 half as a leading coefficient. Uh, we have the 0 at 0, the 1 at negative 1, and the 1 at 2 twice. All right, so we have to add f and g. So I'm going to combine like terms. And it's in standard form because the exponents decrease in order starting at highest to lowest. Okay, subtraction. That's going to be minus 2x squared minus 9. So negative x squared plus 2x minus 16. The degree of the product of f and g. So x squared times x squared will be x to the fourth. And for d, g times h, so x squared times x is a degree of 3. And let's multiply f and h. So you can distribute um, if you want to stay organized, you can use a box. So I'll use box method so you can see um, this is 5x to the third, 10x squared, negative 35x. So I'm multiplying 5x times x squared, 5x times 2x, 5x times negative 7. 
you would get the same thing if you distributed. Now for my bottom row, that's 3x squared, 6x, and negative 21. So I can see my like terms here. So we have 5x to the third plus 13x squared minus 29x minus 21. Okay, so now we have to do f and g. I just need to rewrite my equations. I can't see them. All right, so I'll do box again. It doesn't matter if you did the trinomial as the vertical or horizontal piece. It's a personal preference. Okay, so combining my like terms, we've got 2x to the 4th plus 4x to the 3rd minus, so here we got my x squared, 5x squared plus 18x minus 63. All right, 59. Jillian divides that polynomial by x minus 9 and gets a quotient with a remainder. Is x minus 9 a factor? No, because there is a remainder that is not 0. So what is the value of f of 9? Well, because the remainder was 145, the value is 145. Okay, so now Jake divides that polynomial by x minus 3 and gets no remainder. So what is the value of f of 3? Well, it's going to be a 0 because the remainder is 0. Why is x minus 3 a factor? It's a factor because there is no remainder or because the remainder equals 0. Okay, so let's factor. Um, when we divided, so x minus 3 is a factor, and we were left with x squared plus 6. So writing f of x as in factored form, we'll get x minus 3 times x squared plus 6. Okay, Jesse looks at that function and believes that 8 is a 0. He decides to test his value by finding f of 8. So if we find f of 8, does that equal 0? And it does. What is the graphical interpretation of the fact that 8 is a 0 of the function? That means that 8 is an x-intercept. Since 8 is a 0, then by the factor theorem, x minus 8 is a factor. Okay, what's the remainder going to be? It's going to be 0 because it's a factor, so there will be no remainder. So when he divides, he gets x squared plus x plus 7. Use this quotient to determine whether the other zeros are real. Okay, so let's solve that. Hmm. Um, it doesn't factor. Nothing multiplies to 7 that adds to 1. It, I'm not going to want to complete the square since this is 1. So I can do quadratic formula. And I notice... Because this is going to be a negative value, he's going to get um, non-real solutions. So, what's the question? He obtains the quotient. Use it to determine whether the other zeros are real. No, they're not. 
they will have an Im imaginary component. And last but not least, the last question on your exam review. Okay, we have a degree of four with a negative leading coefficient, so that means my end behaviors both go down. The roots are negative three, one, and four. So I have to go through negative three, through one, and back down. And there's a rough sketch of my graph.